All right, event four, it just gets nastier and nastier here. There's a lot of squatting, there's a lot of shoulder to overhead, and there's a lot of pull-ups. So yeah, you're gonna burn your quads out for sure and your legs out for sure. So maybe a good suggestion, what I would suggest is maybe starting the back squats a little wider, maybe powerlifting style, and then let the front squat and the overhead squat be a little narrower. So you can start bringing it in and maybe saving yourself some quad for the next day, right? So another thing to think about here is that there's a lot of volume and work from shoulder to overhead and there's a lot of pull-up work where we're gonna need to have that movement strength but we're also gonna need to have good positional strength so a way to be able to maximize both of those is just to make sure that if you check Kelly's mobility wad to work on a lot of external rotation pieces external rotation pieces sorry from mid-range to anything that's end range and maybe even end range and extension so start working on these external rotation pieces because that's what's going to be the positional strength and that's what's going to carry you very far um, really quick on the pull-up something to think about here is how do I go about doing that many pull-ups without tearing my hands up we saw a lot of people last year on the hundred workout where you had the hundred pull-ups just messed their hands up and the next day they had muscle ups it was not a very comfortable and nice scene so we have to be able to save ourselves I talked a little bit about this last year where I said how do we grab the bar in order to be able to hold on a little longer and I talked about the hook grip and I said when hanging from a bar getting the hook grip was having your thumb on top of the index finger middle finger and that's what allowed you to hang a little better and get this little closed wrist position that allowed you to work through that and not having the rotation around the bar. So that's one of the things I talked about last year. So if you haven't watched that, check that out and look at that. But if that's something you can't handle or you're a female athlete with smaller hands and you're using a bar that's a little fatter and you can't get this hook grip, something to think about is just this. Can you get the pinky knuckle on top of the bar? So that doesn't matter if you're going thumb over the bar, thumb around the bar, if you can get the hook grip or not the hook grip, but just having that pinky knuckle over the bar is gonna give you a little external rotation. So when you're doing your pull-ups, you're gonna feel very strong and way better and most likely not rip as soon and as much. The other thing I want you to think about is this, is that if you look at me from the side right here, if I'm hanging and I'm doing a little kip, I wanna keep that kip as short as I can, not the pull up, the kip, the swing, the bigger it is, the more rotation you see in the hand. So the smaller you can keep the hip, the kip, the better. If you watch Annie Thorey start last year on the 100 workout, she did butterfly pull ups, but she kept them very small. The bigger you make it, the more friction there is, and the more you're going to just tear your hands apart. But even worse, when you have to go from shoulder to overhead, you're going to get smoked sooner, and you may have these no reps at the top, and that's just a bummer. And when you have to hold the bar overhead doing some overhead, Head squats is not very heavy but it's definitely going to be taxing and your shoulders are going to get fatigued so whatever you can do at a micro scale to save your shoulders on the bigger picture go for it and this is I think is going to be one of those minor pieces that you can do that look small here but in the big picture have big relevance so try that see how it goes just a pinky knuckle over the bar